Hi everybody. Hello, I'm Ryan. I'm Bethany. And we are Ryan and Bethany Board Game Reviews. And today we're going to be talking about Subatomic, published by Genius Games. All right, so this is a deck builder, uh, but rather than build your deck up for because to build a deck, what you're doing ultimately <laughs> is you are building all these different particles up, making up various elements of the periodic table. Um, so there's a whole lot of science involved. I want to give you a real quick overview of how that looks on the table, and then we'll get back to the review. Here is the board and setup for Subatomic. This is a deck building game, so you're gonna start with a small, really thin deck of three items, up quarks, down quarks, and photon gamma rays. And those are kind of like the, apparently the building blocks of, the building blocks of, the building blocks of elements. <laughs> so we're down to the very, very smallest parts of, of, of the universe. So over the course of the game, you're gonna use those, you're gonna use those to buy bigger parts of atoms which is gonna consist of electrons, neutrons, protons. Then from there, you are gonna use those to buy these bigger, stronger versions of those cards, which have you know two protons at a time, or two protons and two neutrons, that kind of thing. Um, you also have to pay the energy cost, uh, along with any other energy costs that might be on the cards, like down here. And the energy are those little tokens down off to the right. And eventually you're gonna turn all these things that you've been creating uh, into the full-on elements. So you've got things like helium, lithium, beryllium, boron. Uh, those are the ones that you're using, that you're creating in this game. Now you're also going to be assisted by these scientists. There are seven in the game, but you only play with four at a time, and you buy them using energy, at the cost of the bottom right, and they get increasingly more expensive. So you buy the first one, the next one's you know one more than that one, and those kind of help you along, speed you up. They may let you draw cards or get extra energy all helping you progress to ultimately buy these, you know, create these elements over here. So when you purchase one of these, let's say we were able to cash in two protons, two neutrons, and two electrons to buy helium. We have these little cubes. We're going to place those on these end goals. You can place them on the same spot or on different spots. The only restriction is they can't be the same exact spot where you bought them. So let's say this is helium. We can put them on, let's say, lithium and beryllium maybe some elements that we might get later on. There are also some special bonus tokens on these various elements. And the first one to place something there is gonna get them. You only get one per turn though. So even if you did do lithium and beryllium, you'd have to choose one of the rewards. And those are various things like, this one says gain three particles. There are also ones that let you draw cards. There's ones that let you get extra points. So there's a lot of different variety within those as well. So for the points at the end of the game, is going to be all your elements, their mass number at the bottom right of the card, that number is victory points, and then also, uh, this track on the left of the end goals, whoever has the most amount of cubes in a various element, uh, or category, including the element set there, is going to get that as a multiplier. So, for instance, if we had the most cubes in lithium, we would get three points per lithium card at the end of the game. Whoever had the second most lithium would get two points at the end of the game. We're going to total all those up, and whoever has the most points at the end of the game wins. Now also on the main board here, there is an action called Annihilate. So that is a way of kind of culling out some cards of your deck, especially the weaker cards. So it costs energy, and it costs as many uh, energy as what the current tracker is. So every time someone annihilates, the tracker moves up one, it gets more and more expensive. Once it gets to the end of the track, from there on out, every time you annihilate, it costs four energy. Now those cards do have to come from your hand, so it takes some kind of advanced planning and some sacrifice in order to do it, but it can be very uh, profitable to have a thinner deck with stronger cards in it. Now here is your player board. Along the right hand side here, it kind of tells you what all the different actions you can take on your turn are, some additional bonuses actions you can take by spending energies, how you get energy, you spend a card, put it face down into your discard pile, and take one energy. And then also, you can spend... Uh, you know, two up quarks and a down quark to count as a proton. Let's say you don't have a proton bought yet, but you want to use a proton. You can use those things, you know, to, as those elements. So two of those photon gamma rays can act as an electron. Also, the left side of the board is how you're kind of building these elements. So elements are built up of mainly protons, neutrons, and electrons. So you have these little trackers. If you have once you've you spent a card to move up the electron track, you can spin them up to go on the proton and neutron tracks as well. And that's kind of how you're kind of gauging where you are. And that's how you're going to spend that stuff once you have to spend all of it in order to buy an elect you know, to buy one of the elements. Even if you have little extra protons or whatever, it doesn't matter. You spend everything that you have. You can overpay if you want. But really what you're going to do is you're going to spend all those items 
all the protons, neutrons, and electrons in order to buy whatever the best situation for you is, whatever element is available in that lineup. You also need to spend energy along with it in order to purchase it. Uh, but yeah, that's how you're going to win the game. You add up all of your points from the elements and then from that end goal track, and whoever has the most points wins. I really enjoy games that have a tiny little box, but yet so much game in it. And this was one of those games that has this tiny little box, um, but when it's on the table, it feels like there's a lot, um, a lot there. And so it's nice about how it's compact, but everywhere. And I also, this is such a tiny little thing, but I loved it. On your own player board, you have these little um, like clear trackers and they are perfect. They're absolutely perfect. Since they're clear, you can see the number that's underneath and it just looks really neat. And I really like that little aspect of the component quality was wonderful. I think that the science behind this game is, is just really fun and it's a really great way of learning and teaching these concepts. Um, you know, the up quarks and the down quarks and the, the photon gamma rays, all that kind of building into protons and neutrons and electrons, and then how those built into, ultimately, to elements. I thought that, that was a really clever way of, of kind of teaching those concepts. There's actually a whole extra book in the box along with the rule book that kind of shows the science behind all that and how these different things were discovered and who discovered them, all the scientists that are in the game and what their actual contributions to physics and um, to, to chemistry and all that stuff were. Um, so I really thought that was a cool part of this game. Speaking of the scientists that were in the games, um, this game is pretty straightforward, but I like the little bit of variety that the scientists gave and that the reward tokens gave on that track. Um, just that little bit, because they're all different. They're, you only play with four, and there's seven in the game when it comes to the scientists, and I don't remember how many chips there were over there, but you don't play with all of them. So you never really know what you're going to get, and that little bit of variety made it really nice. I thought that the player counts for this were really well balanced. We played with two, three, and four. Um, the two player count, um, it, it went by really fast. The rounds just went unbelievably fast. I won't, the nice thing about the four player game was um, you get to see more stuff come through the lineup. So as you buy something from the track, new cards were revealed from the, from the deck. Um, and the bad thing is sometimes that same thing that you were looking for finally pops up and then someone else buys it. <laughs> but it's just, yeah, yeah, so it really worked on all levels. I think all the player counts were really well balanced. All right, so a lot of deck builders have this engine building type of thing where you start here, you get bigger, and you get bigger. And the nice thing about this game that I realized in most of the games that are most of the times we played is, so let's call them like one, two, three, the steps you're at. If somebody's already at that three stage, nobody's stuck at that one stage. All the players are at the very least if at that two stage, if not also at that three stage. So I like that it build up together and that um, at the end when you're scoring, people are, are within one or two turns away from each other. So I just like how um, it built up, all the players kind of built up at the same time and it wasn't like somebody was getting everything while somebody was stuck with nothing. Yeah, I do say, we'll say that the... Um this is a pretty straightforward deck builder, right? It's not overly complicated. Oh, yeah. It's really pretty just, you know, you're going from here to here to here to here, and everything just kind of kind of flows and makes sense. And for that simple of a game, I would have expected a pretty simple rule book, um, but it was a little bit more convoluted than I would have thought. And I think the reason is, because I've had this problem with other Genius games as well, is that um, the games are so solid and they are so fun, but there's also the element of making the science accurate. Um, and so there's kind of an extra level of, of consideration that aren't in other rule books. And because of that, it takes a second read through to kind of really grasp everything. Um, so it's not really a knock on the game. I would just say as a warning, assign your best rule book <laughs> learner to this game to make sure you get the best uh, enjoyment out of the game because it really was fun. I really enjoyed this game, and I think that this game would really be perfect in a, in a school setting, but not just a school setting, maybe a homeschool setting where you have more time to explore things. What I will say is, A, I liked the game. It was fun. You don't have to actually know anything about the science to enjoy the game. You can right. still just build it. Um, if I had been able to play this game while I was learning this in high school, it would have stuck. It would have made sense. I just always struggled with these concepts, and if I had had this to pair it, it would have just happened. It would have clicked. I think I learned more playing this <laughs> game than I did in my high school class. Uh, I was lucky to have a very good teacher. Um, a competent teacher. A competent teacher. So I uh, 
remembered a lot of this kind of stuff. I, I had no problems with it in school. Uh, but that being said, this was a great refresher. This is not something you talk about on a daily basis, yeah. <laughs> you know. So going over that again was really nice. I think that um, when our daughters comes to time, you know, it's time to learn about these kinds of things. We're busting this out. Um, so that, we love that part of the Genius Games, um, and we're looking forward to everything they, they have, you know, for to teach our daughters those kinds of concepts. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to subscribe to us um, on our YouTube channel or follow us on Facebook under Ryan and Bethany Board Game Reviews. You can also find us on Instagram under Ryan and Bethany. You can find us on Twitter under Ryan and Bethany One. And make sure to stay tuned till the very end if you want to hear our pounds and inches update. Yeah, if you want to go further into that too, you can go to our blog on BoardGameGeek.com. It's all called Pounds and Inches. Um, but until then, bye, bye. guys. Hey guys, thanks for sticking around for our Pounds and Inches segment. As you know, we'd love to talk about uh, things that we've learned about health along the way, tidbits we can teach to you guys, how we're doing with our progress. Um, and today, my progress is maybe a little bit less fun. <laughs> but have you ever been to a carnival? Have you ever looked in one of those goofy mirrors, you know, that reshapes your body and um, makes you all silly and, you know, big and all that kind of stuff? Um, I had one of those experiences recently. I looked in a mirror and my face looked huge. And I was like, oh man, it's one of those mirrors. That's hilarious. It wasn't one of those mirrors. It was my regular mirror. Um... So yeah, the reality is I've put on a little bit of weight and I can tell and it's really getting me down. And when I get down, what do I do? I eat. <laughs> it's just this really vicious cycle for most of my adulthood. Um, but, oh, there, there. <laughs> so uh, today, not so much of a fun update, but I'm just trying to be, to be realistic. And um, so I have nothing to offer you guys, unfortunately, today. But I just want to let you guys know where I'm at and uh, if you know... Send a word of encouragement if you can. Something that's uh, maybe helped kick you out of a funk. I would really appreciate it. I would have kind of raised my spirits. Um, things are warming up around the Midwest, so we're finally able to get outside. I'm looking forward to, to spending some time outside. Um, that is, traditionally in the past has kind of kind of reawakened that part of of, uh, of my health life. You know, get outside, walking on the bike path, and all those kinds of things that I'm looking forward to. So stay tuned uh hopefully some good news coming uh, as far as that way goes we do have a contest this is me saying give away a giveaway <laughs> we have a contest a giveaway contest We're giving away a couple games coming up soon so stay tuned uh and you will not be sorry you did all right <laughs> that's right i'm bethany bye guys bye